Hello traders and welcome to the week outlook and setups volume 66 it's Ilya here and as always I'm super glad to have you on my channel as you know in this video we're gonna have a look at the market how it developed this week what opportunities did we have and what can we potentially expect for the upcoming week so I'm having a losing week uh, I lost two trades uh, I'm gonna show you absolutely everything so you can extract something from it and I'm actually gonna share my reflections on the trades that I took uh, so that we can always improve and take our losses as lessons all right so uh if you're new to the channel it's all about trading i share weekly analysis i share educational content i'm gonna start sharing more uh from the psychological side and more like a journaling vlog experience so make sure to subscribe hit the notification bell in order not to miss anything and if you already did let's see what do we have for the week ahead As always, starting from the DXY weekly time frame, let's see what do we have. So for the previous week, we had a pretty nice bullish candle and we had the expectations of the market actually providing us with a pullback, with a weekly pullback, because you can see we've had this push to the downside that broke structure right here. We had a little bit of a lower high and then we plummeted to the downside. So the dollar is extremely weak and uh, actually creating this beautiful lower low. So we should expect a little bit of a pullback. But what I can see if I zoom in from a weekly time frame is all of those wicks right here, uh, like the average is around right here that creates some sort of structure that the market is failing to break above. And, and as you can see, if I drop to the daily time frame, we can adjust this line a little bit and here is our key level for the dollar which is around 93.80 something like this because you can see the market pulled back right here pushed away came back failed to break above pulled back again then again creating actually a lower high lower low but right now as you can see if i go back to five days the market opened right here on the 7th of september we had a push into the highs the market looked like it broke that structure we have one day of a pullback then a huge wick to the downside and right now we're actually staying in the middle all right so the dollar from a daily time frame is in the accumulation phase are we going to push to the upside we don't know but i just want to keep in mind this daily area and dropping to my main time frame, the full hourly. So where the market opened, it was around right here. So not really clear because I wanted to see if the market is actually going to break above these areas. And as you can see, we actually broke above it. We came back for retails, which provided us with some short opportunities on Euro. Uh, then the market pushed strongly into the highs. And then we had the strong melt to the downside with this huge wick. And what the market actually is doing right now is just consolidating. So as you know, I always keep my analysis as simple as possible. And I just follow the structure we have the structure high right here and we have uh, the low so where is the market it's in the middle and this is the most recent price action all right and i always do follow this because i'm a day trader so what i want to see is if the market is going to emerge above come back for a little retest and then see how it's going to behave around this big daily area right here and if it's going to create any higher highs and actually the dollar turning uh, bullish all right but if the market starts to break to the downside strongly, then comes back for a little lower high formation to show me the rejections right here. Then I'm going to start looking for the shorts. Uh, but this potential is going to happen on Monday. So let's see where the dollar will take us this week. I will not rush to give any bias yet because I'm not sure myself. It's like in an overall consolidation. The overall pressure is to the upside. But with this push to the downside and then the market failing to break to break above and below, I just want to see the uh, new structure at market open. So let's just keep in mind those two key levels and let's see what Monday has for us. All right, let's have a look at EURUSD weekly time frame. So what do we have right here? Uh, as we've been speaking for quite some weeks, you, you can see this cluster right here of weekly candles really not being able to either break above or below. And as you can see, this week is actually a perfect um, like doji candle. Not, not sure what was the name, but it really doesn't matter. It's just an indecision candle. All right, so nothing much to extract. What you can usually do is you can draw a rectangle like this, which will create your range for the week. And potentially you're going to have a clear structure in the flowery time frame, which is not the case. And uh, this is not how I trade as well. So let's just jump straight on the daily time frame. So what do we have? Very similar to the DXY. We're having a huge push to the upside from a daily time frame and right now we're having this distribution phase on top you can see that we're overall trending to the upside however this week actually the market dipped below and right now this really looks like a retest this is a huge week that the, the market is supposed to fill at least 50 percent which we actually had and what do we have as well is this double top formation so from a daily time frame uh we can have some sellers incoming all right 
uh, I'm not rushing to uh, to uh, to just to say, okay, we're going down because I will always follow the structure. But just to summarize what the week has for us, I just bought it one long opportunity, which was non-tradable hours for me. But when the market opened right here, we just started to pump to the downside. The Mondays were very quiet. And as you can see right here, I couldn't spot any trades uh, on the 15 minute. It was rather choppy, rather unclear. As you can see with all of that, that consolidation, all of these uh, uh, clusters right here. But what happened later is actually this trend line to the downside got broken with this massive push to the upside. We had a beautiful pullback right here, a bullish candle right here and a 50% retracement. So there was a beautiful trade that I actually journaled uh, from exactly right here. But if we have a look, the time was 3 o'clock uh, during Asia. Very, very sad. Like this week has been a little bit unlucky for me because I got caught up in two uh, trades during London with manipulation and I missed on all of those beautiful trades that I usually trade, which happen either later in the day or uh, during uh, midnight or during Asia, something like this. All right, so back into the analysis, let's let's stay focused. What I said right now from a daily time frame is that we have a potential shift to the downside. But as you can see right here, we have the same situation with the dollar. So we have this, oops, we have this area, we have this resistance and we have this support to the downside, which is the major one. And what I can see is that the market is forming a very little supportive level around here. So what I want to see for Monday is how the market is going to open. Are we going to push to the downside, meaning that the DXY should break above? It's very crucial as well for the DXY to break. But actually, uh, what I've been thinking recently is that the DXY is created by euro like i think it's around 55 or 60 percent so whatever euro does the dxy will respond right so let's just be uh, let's just be patient let's see what happens i am waiting for strong moves to show me where the market wants to go either to the upside either to the downside with a clear break of this structure maybe we're gonna come and create a double bottom then with a pullback lower high formation and i'm gonna be looking for shorts but if the market breaks above this area right here, then potentially I'm going to start looking for longs. All right. So stay tuned for the Tuesday analysis on Telegram and let's see how the market is going to open. Euro JPY weekly time frame, very similar situation as Euro USD. We can see this cluster on top, the market failing to break above. You see how it tries to break, tries to break again, but fails. And right now this week it tries to push down, but failed. All right. So we have some support coming from the downside right here and we have some resistance coming from the top. So if I jump right now to the daily time frame, everything is going to become clear. And as you can see, we have a daily consolidation. All right. So no clear direction yet. All right. So keep in mind those resist support and resistance levels here. And although I don't trade them, uh, I always try to see where actually the market is located. You can see we have a beautiful uptrend. Push, pullback, push, pullback, push, pullback. Beautiful uptrend. Right now the market is in consolidation. So what is usually supposed to happen is the market should start trending to the downside because this is the market cycle. Uptrend, distribution, downtrend, accumulation, and then we again go up. All right. So let's see daily time frame, nothing much to discuss. And from a quality time frame, again, I couldn't spot any trades on market open right here. We actually had a massive drop uh, from right here, which was potentially a tradable opportunity, but it was very, very wicky, very strange. We massively dropped to the downside right here. We have quite a lot of manipulation from that supportive level. Then we exploded to the upside. So potentially an opportunity right here, but Euro USD was looking much better. And then we just had some massive spikes to the upside, to the downside, because we had, I think, deposit rate and interest rate decision uh, for Euro this week. Not really sure, but I think that was the case. And hence why all of those uh, large movements. All right. So what I will do again, as you already know, we're going to mark the highs. We're going to mark the lows from right here, which is a pretty nice supportive level. This one, because you can see we have that rally. We have the market creating a higher low and then again, rallying up, then coming back again to tap that area, but failing to break below, punching to the upside, but creating this resistance area. EMA is still pointing to the upside. The market is finding support on the full hourly, which is still major as well. So what do we need again, guys? Very, very simple analysis for this week. Again, we just wait for the market to show us clear direction, either to the downside, either to the upside, and just an introduction of volume. Uh, because you can see uh, we have that consolidation. And when actually the market introduces the volume, then we can start training if we can find the potential setup. Because right now the market is just consolidating. So I'm not giving any bias. I'm just waiting for the market to show me where it wants to go. All right. So that is your JPY. Make sure again to stay tuned for the Tuesday analysis.
Euro Aussie weekly time frame. Let's see what do we have. So as you can see, the market is really failing to break below that supportive level on the daily. So that is pretty crucial to mark. Uh, sorry, on the weekly. Then we drop to the daily time frame. We have this massive drop to the downside. The market accumulating a little bit, then trying to push up pullback. So we have this overall consolidation which you see it's not clear from a daily but then when it dropped to the four hourly time frame so we had from the previous week this nice push so i was expecting the market to react from these areas right here it actually did like this was monday so we expected the market to go up but you can see monday will always try to manipulate to the downside have a look at that huge wick after actually the move started to the upside but we tried to create a hard high, we really didn't, then we massively dropped to the downside, then again we massively pushed to the upside, so really, really uh, unclear structure. There was one break-even trade that I'm gonna show you, which is from right here, when the market actually shifted the direction and I thought, okay, we are going to the upside again. Nice break to the upside with a retest on the hourly time frame, and on the 15 minute, the entry was taken just from right here. The market introducing the volume, pulling back right here, pushing to the upside, not reaching targets, coming back to tap break even and actually then it ended up uh, pushing to the target. But you can see the, the overall price action right here is really not nice. So definitely not a nice, uh, not a nice setup right here. So if I am to, uh, to judge what can happen the next week, well, definitely the direction of this one is not clear. The market is currently sitting in the middle because we can draw our major support, we can draw our major resistance if you want to, although I don't because I focus on the structure, but even the structure right now is not clear, all right? We can have the high uh, push pullback, is this a lower high, but then we see the market that it's creating this structure as well. So again, we have a market stuck between those areas and I would really love to actually see uh, some clear structure because just looking at this one, it's consolidation and I avoid trading within consolidations. Uh, I What I do is usually drop to the hourly time frame to focus on the momentum. And as you can see, when the market emerged right here, I expected the market to come back and test the previous resistance, uh, which actually happened, but uh, it's really not worth putting your money in into such a trade. So Euro Aussie, not clear for now, waiting for something clear to happen. Keep those levels in mind and let's see for any momentum introductions. Let's have a look at the Aussies, Aussie USD weekly time frame. That's the pair that I traded this week. So uh, we're having an indecision candle right here on top from a weekly time frame, which doesn't tell us much, but I think when, once we drop to the daily time frame, it's gonna make more sense. So we have this massive push to the upside, right? So we usually, all the people are looking for a retest right here. You can see even the reaction, but it wasn't enough and the market went down to fill that wick. That actually created a higher low. If I drop the Fibonacci, you can see how it failed to break the 78.6, which is still a sign. And I've been analyzing my loss and I think this is what caused it, right? So what I was looking at, guys, as you can see, this massive introduction of selling pressure right here, and a pullback and we actually had an indecision candle right here so i took my trade exactly from here if i drop to the hourly time frame uh, i i made a like confluence as well with this strong push to the downside with this nice break we had two hourly candles of indecision we have this bearish engulf that formed during frankfurt which was actually a nasty manipulation to to catch uh, yeah retail traders like me and uh, what I did, as you can see, uh, we had a trend line to the upside. The market created a little head and shoulders right here. We broke massively to the downside. So I took my trade from right here. Stop loss above. Uh, yeah, something like this above the structure and take profit was for a lower low at the 27 extension. And what you can see, guys, I got triggered and it was just boom, 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 immediate stop loss. So it's, it was one of those trades that just show you, all right, bro, you were wrong. It's not consolidation, just thinking what it should be doing, trying to push down, trying to push up. Nope. And as you can see, this was exactly London open. So usually London comes with massive volume. And if it's on the wrong direction, you're just getting stopped out. And as you can see later, actually, the market broke above, created a higher high, tested the, the previous structure. Now, the, the previous resistance now becoming support, tested again and actually ended up playing out nicely to the upside. So this is my loss for this week. Actually, I have another one as well, uh, which was exactly the same pattern. So uh, the thing that I want to reflect on is have a look at this right now, this bearish engulf and then the next candle hitting stop loss. So keep that in mind because the next trade is actually exactly the same. All right. So what do we have from an Aussie perspective right now? Absolutely nothing. So we have this consolidation on top. We have this uh, supportive level on the bottom as well. The market is trying to figure out where it wants to go, but it just can't figure out. If I have a look on the daily again, it's not clear as well, because what you can see is all of that wick areas right here. Wick, 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 wick. So the market is fading to break above. And as you can see how we come up with a very strong level right here. 
So if I am to take any longs, I want to see a clear break above, not just a manipulation and then the market coming back in, but a clear break with a retest and then continuation. Or if the market starts to punch to the downside, then the break in the retest and the continuation. I am seeing a little bit of a potential head and shoulders as well right here, which is already forming. So maybe the favor will be to the upside, but let's just not say anything right now. Let's not try to speculate on, on Saturday. Let's see how Monday opens and then let's try to just adjust our analysis and follow the momentum so this is what i'm looking currently for aussie you can see i'm only using two rectangles and this is the way i trade and this is the way i can make it right so don't over complicate it Aussie JPY weekly time frame exactly the same price action as AU. You can see a weekly candle of uh, indecision coming from the downside as well. So potentially we're gonna have a weak fill of this one. So let's see. Daily time frame we have this nice push to the upside again. The pullback into the structure, the the buyers coming in, but then the sellers snapping to the price down. Then the massive bullish engulfing candle because all the people got stop uh, got stop losses on this candle. And then again, you see it comes up, but again, we have this weak area right here that the market is failing to break. And if I jump to the hourly time frame, we have exactly the same price action. We have this potential inverse head and shoulders as well, but the market is failing to break above this area right here. So what I need to see is if the market will actually manage to emerge above this area to come back for a potential retest or just for a higher low. I don't need to retest exactly this structure. I will need as well a higher low right here for a continuation, all right? So very simple analysis. Let's see if the market is going to break above or if it's going to break below this structural area. And let's just follow the momentum on Aussie JPY. Let's have a quick look on the NZDs because they're almost the same as the Aussies. Not really nice price action. So right here we have a strong weekly candle pushing to the upside, creating the top. And right now we are pulling back. So is this actually going to form support? Because you can see this is a break and retest. In order to push up, we shall see uh, for the week ahead. Again, right here, we have this massive push to the upside, the market trying to pull back, finding some support right here, but plunging to the downside and actually creating a little bit of a complex correction. As you can see, we have a break in the retest. So if I drop to the forward time frame, you can see how that area actually works out. So very, very major area. And as you can see, all the people wanted to sell right here. And then we had the, again, this ugly manipulation to the upside. Um, as you can see, boom, manipulation, stopping out all of the people and then actually launching the move to the downside. And afterwards, um, nothing really happened. I couldn't spot any trades on this one. So definitely um, not a trade, not a very tradable pair for this week. All right. So what do we have again, guys? You can see that the market currently found support from this area. Tried to push down, failed and created a, a rejection candle. And from the top, again, we have an overall, like, I'm really not sure how should I draw it. Like, it's overall like this, but this is becoming a bit, little bit too big. But we have overall this zone right here of of resistance all right so what i want to see again as all of the pairs right now which seems to be consolidating is to see a clear direction are we going to have a push to the upside with a retest to create new hard highs uh, i want to see a clear break above and not just a break like this because this is oops this is pure manipulation just one candle up huge recreated to the upside and then a massive flush to the downside a little tip from me when you're looking for a break in the retest of structure try to see the price stay above for a little bit not just breaking above and you immediately go because this is how actually the banks manipulate uh, all of those breakout traders you see the breakout and you immediately go for a trade no wait for the market to break above stay above then come back again for a higher low and then actually take the trade from that clear higher low not just break and because if you go to the hourly time frame and on the 15 minute uh you have this break you have this retest you have a retest again so all the people are going long right here which actually this was a beautiful manipulation to the upside and then we launched down right so keep that in mind nzd usd waiting for something clear to happen and again as i said a clear break a clear stay above and a retest or the same to the downside NZD JPY exactly the same structure as NU so let's not waste too much time on it we have that strong push to the upside right now we're having a pullback with a wick on, on the bottom which I think the next candle will start to fill in and then potentially we can push to the upside but we never know what's gonna happen so nothing to extract from the weekly daily we have this massive push to the upside and then the market is pulling back right now so is this a higher low 
We don't know. Uh, what do we have as well is this potential complex correction, the market breaking, retesting, failing to break above and right now sitting right here. So potentially we will definitely need to see uh, maybe, you know, the best the best confluence will be a nice daily candle right here to close above that structure because this daily candle will create a nice four hourly push as well. So if you have a daily candle like this, then the next day can potentially provide it with a pullback and then potentially we can go for a nice higher high. All right, so for the time frame, exactly the same price action. We have that supportive level that the market is failing to break uh, below, and we have a very clear resistance area that the market is failing to break. All right, so let's see how Monday goes, and let's see it might happen even on Tuesday. Uh, what I want to see is a clear break above the market to stay above, not just break and, and reach as like this, to stay above, come back again, and then potentially we can target a higher high. All right. So this is for NJ, not excluding the possibility of the same thing happening to the downside. So let's follow the market and let's see what do we have on Tuesday. USDJPY weekly time frame hasn't been developing very nice. As you can see, we have this little candle right here of low volume of indecision. And if I drop to the daily time frame, the last five days, which started from right here, 7th of September, indecision uh even from uh, from the previous thursday and friday indecision 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 tries to push down fails tries to push up fails and then again two days of indecision so really 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 confusing price action and if i jump on the four hourly time frame like we had this introduction of sellers actually we thought that the market is going up but then we have this double bottom right here spot this push to the downside pull back double bottom emerging above breaking this structure that becomes support and then we potentially had a tradable opportunity right here however the market just consolidated and absolutely did nothing so uh if i jump on the hourly time frame i told you there that could there potentially could have been a trade right here but as you can see when the market pushed it came back for manipulation again to stop out all the people that went a little bit too early and then actually the move was launched to the upside so pretty pretty um, manipulative week and again, full hourly time frame, what do we have? We have a consolidation. We have that the resistance area on top. We have the most recent supportive level on the bottom. Actually, the market is forming a little bit of structure right here in between, because if I jump on the hourly, yeah, it's, it's really not clear. So I'm just gonna keep to the uh, major zones. So again, guys, you see that this the, uh, the current price action of the market is rather consolidating, not really clear, clear trends for now. So let's see, let's see what USDJPY has for us, waiting for a clear directional bias because we currently don't have it. We had that introduction of sellers, but as I told you, we had a double bottom and then a reversal back into this overall consolidation. So definitely for the market open, want to see if this is going to go up and if, if this is going to go down. So let's be patient and let's see what's going to happen. A USD cat weekly time frame. We had some weird price action on this one. So we have the bottom on the weekly time frame and we are expecting a pullback, which is already happening. All right. So we potentially can expect a little bit more from a daily time frame. You can see that with this massive push to the upside that happened on Tuesday, it was just massive. We broke above the daily level right here. And actually right now we're coming back for a retest. So this is pretty nice. So potentially uh, we are aligning for a long setup. And as you can see, the Monday the uh, Monday open from here pushed up, created a higher low right here, but it wasn't really clear what the market was about to do. And then just on market open on, on Tuesday, after grabbing the liquidity to the downside with this week, it just exploded massively to the upside. All right, it just exploded. Then we're having a pullback. The market slows down around right here. So we can potentially look for longs. We have manipulation on the news because we had news, USD news. And what did we have later? We had a break above, retest. So potentially I can say that I'm more looking for longs on this market rather than shorts uh, because even we broke this minor structure and we are potentially targeting a new higher high. All right. However, the market you see, but this is Friday, of course, it's failing to break above, right? So uh, if I jump on the hourly time frame, it's yeah, it's, it's not a clear price action. So what I want to see from this pair is uh, either sh two things. Uh, coming right here to create some supportive level, to create some candles, wicks, and uh, whatever he wants to create to show me that this area is being respected again. All right, and then potentially I can take a risky long, uh, but uh, the best scenario is to see the market emerge above this area and then come for a very little pullback on the hourly time frame and then potentially start to target new hard highs, all right? So in USD Cat, I have a long perspective, 
So uh, if uh, me telling you that I'm long on USD cat can um, bring you some confidence as well to search for long opportunities, make sure to do so. But again, uh, make sure to wait for Monday to see what, what will happen because there is a big possibility as well that the market is just going to drop, consolidate and then move. All right. We never know what's going to happen. So let's just keep this analysis. Let's see how the market reacts to this minor supportive level right here. If it's going to find support break above or are we going to flush to the downside and potentially create a new consolidation? We don't know. So make sure to stay tuned for the Tuesday analysis when I'm going to provide you with a update. USD Swiss franc weekly time frame. Let's see what do we have right here. So we have actually a bearish candle. And what I can see from a weekly time frame is that we have a lot of wicks. So we have a weak area right here that is potentially going to become a little bit clearer from a daily time frame. And yes, you can see that if I move the line a little bit to the upside to account for all of the wicks, we have this very, very strong uh, resistance area. Tap, tap. Um, not really a tap, but then it taps again and it reverses down, right? So very major line. Make sure to have it on your charts. So well, one opportunity that I saw on use this strength before reversing. So on Monday, we had this consolidation and when the market actually introduced the bullish pressure. Yeah, I even have the line right here. So this is where I looked for a trade once the bullish pressure was introduced. Nice push with a pullback. But unfortunately, this again, the trade that I wanted to take, it was from right here. Stop loss around right here, but you can see the time it was 1.30. So this is around Asian session and I'm sleeping by that time, but it was a beautiful trade to the upside, uh, which I regret again not taking. Uh, but again, it's not my trading time. And this was the only setup that I saw because later the market started to consolidate on the, on the top. Oops, sorry. Let's see. Yeah, we had a double top. All right, a lot of wicks right here. And then the market just decided to plummet to the downside without giving zero pullbacks. All right, so all of a sudden the market started to pump to the downside. And if you're not trading the five minute or the 15 minute to catch those little pullbacks, then you're not able to catch a trade. All right. Then we, uh, after the massive push, the market starts to consolidate around right here, making the bias of this whole market unclear. So overall, if I just follow this massive push to the downside, we should say that we are sell bias. And we have this lower high formation. And from the bottom, we have the supportive level that it's too, that the market still has to deal with. Uh, from an hourly time frame perspective, nothing really clear because this was profit taking from the downside and then the market starts to accumulate and distribute uh, whatever it is. So right now, what am I looking for? All right. So absolutely the same situation. You can see, guys, when the market opens and when it's consolidating. Oops, sorry. It was around right here. Once you have that introduction of the volume, then it's all about finding that trade. And I use the hourly time frame for it. All right. A little tip. So right now, what I want to see is the market actually introducing to me where it wants to go. If I have strong candles to the downside, then on the first uh, pullback, I'm going to be looking for shorts. And if I have a strong break above this area, a clear break, and then a little pullback, then I'm going to be looking for longs. All right. So let's see what happens. Just following the momentum overall, it's bearish. So we might continue to push down. But again, it depends on the dollar and on euro because USD Swiss franc is directly correlated to euro USD and to the DXY. So let's see what will we have. And here is a little uh, breakdown of Swiss franc JPY, the other trade that I took this week. So as you can see, overall bullish market on the weekly time frame, starting to create some wicks right here and potentially expecting a little bit of a pullback to the downside. And as you can see, the daily, if we go back a few days ago, 7th of September, we pushed lower and we created a lower low, which was the first sign of the market trying to reverse. But then we had this massive bullish engulf. And actually, by the time that I traded it, I saw this wick right here that was supposed to be filled. And I think this was my little mistake, but I still expected that the market will start to roll to the downside. And as you can see from a forward time frame, so we had this push and it was the first mistake was that the market was trending up. All right. We have a higher high, a higher low. Sorry, we have a higher low again. And I'm trying to take the trade from around right here. So this was a big mistake that I did. But if I drop to the hourly time frame, what did we have? We have the market strongly pushing up. Then we have the market strongly pushing down and overall breaking below this structure that maybe actually take the trade. And what I see, what I saw, sorry, is the market consolidating around that area and then creating this massive bearish engulf, breaking structure to the downside. And if you remember AusUSD, it was exactly the same uh, pattern at exactly the same time. You can see again. Uh, at eight o'clock, this is the eight o'clock candle. This is Frankfurt. And then on London open, we actually have that immediate stop loss. So if I show you my entry, uh, the consolidation, then we have a break below. So I enter it right here uh, on that wick. 
my stop loss was above the structure 10 pips yeah it was exactly 10 pips and then i was looking for a nice lower low and as you can see i got triggered then it was looking very nice immediate uh, profit but then the market just boom massive 15 minute engulfing candle and then boom boom stop loss immediately manipulating above all of those uh, uh all of those structures right here then tries to push down but fails and then we actually end up pushing to the upside and ended up in a consolidation all right so this was my trade and the reflection I made is just be careful around London Open because it's associated with a lot of manipulation and uh, just again keep make sure that you're going with the overall trend because taking a short right here wasn't really the great choice because you're not in a downtrend first and it was a riskier trade and this is why I risk less as well. Uh, but yeah, this is with Frank. This was my second trade for today, uh, the third trade actually for this week. So overall uh, losing around 2% and something. All right, let's have a look at the GBP starting from GU. Massive, massive, massive selling pressure. As you can see, a massive bearish engulfing to the downside on the weekly time frame. Daily time frame, since market opened, the market just started to pump to the downside without stop. We just stopped for a little bit on the 9th of September, which was uh, Wednesday, I believe. Yep. And then we continued to drop to the downside, introducing that massive, massive, massive volume to the downside. So uh there were opportunities right here potentially for a lower high because the market and market open it just started to flush to the downside providing with little to no tradable opportunities like uh, there was one right here uh but this was again a asian session then we actually in london open we had this move to the downside uh, but overall right here not really clear what's gonna happen and then we just started to drop and then again we come right here with this consolidation a little bit of manipulation above right here around these areas but more uh, more or less creating a double top and then again another massive break to the downside and right now where is price it's very low right now creating a lower low so what i would expect on the gbps is a lower high around this area potentially the flow we need to pull back to create a lower high and then we can potentially start to uh drop it to the downside again uh, everything can happen maybe we're gonna push up come back and then start pumping up creating a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders but those are just speculations really nothing uh, saying nothing so overall when the market is pumping to the downside we keep following the trend so let's see if the gbp is gonna pull back around these areas right here we have a little bit of a resistance that got formed on friday and potentially we're gonna have a wick fill of those wicks so let's see if it's gonna pull back for a lower high and then we can launch some shorts and absolutely the same situation with gj look at that evening star formation right here is just massive i would expect a little bit of a pullback though so i really really want to see because you see just started to melt to the downside one candle just to take a breath and then it continued to pump to the downside creating again this opportunity potentially right here which was on the 10th of september this was thursday so potentially short on the gbps on thursday and as for right now again i would expect the same situation the market to pull back around those areas right here to create a lower high formation consolidate for a little bit and then potentially going to take it to the downside all right so bearish bias on the gbps we're just waiting for a little bit of a pullback and if we have a look at ga as well massive drop all, all the gbp super weak this one is creating new lows massive lows as well so we just have to follow the momentum but as you can see from a daily time frame we it, it was five straight days of a flush so I would definitely expect a little bit of a pullback, which can provide us with some long opportunities as well, but really don't want to go against all of that pressure to the downside, because you can see this is even not creating any pullbacks at all. This was just a little one, so potentially we could have taken some trades around this area, but not really clear. Then again, we drop no pullbacks at all. So definitely GA is very volatile, is very tricky to trade. I, I don't like too much. I know some of you guys love GA, but it hasn't been working nice for me. So I just, I don't trade it at all. But what I would expect on this market is for a nicer pullback. And keep in mind that the market is very low on the daily as well. So we can potentially have a little bit of a daily pullback at first, maybe even one or two daily candles. Maybe Monday is gonna create a pullback and then Tuesday consolidate and then we can start launching to the downside again, all right? So let's see, waiting for a pullback on all of the GBPs for a lower high and I would expect on Euro GBP to have a higher low. As you can see, this one again, massive engulfing candle breaking above all of those supportive levels, which is pretty nice to see. Uh, daily time frame, extremely massive push. So definitely, definitely, I would love to see a little bit of a pullback. Full hourly time frame again, pushing to the highs. First opportunity right here on 9th of September, uh, which I didn't take. 
not sure why because it was looking nice like consolidation right here a lot of wicks around right here yeah i think i know why actually i was looking for, i was looking at it uh, from this break and retest perspective exactly right here but once i dropped to the 15 minute to monitor for my entries it really didn't make sense as you can see push down push back up push down back up and i just couldn't find my entry that i usually do uh, i usually trade and then just all of a sudden the market launched to the upside provided with no pullback for a retest and uh we, ju we just ended up without taking any trade on that one right so uh, again what i do expect to happen is for the market to pull back right to pull back around those areas start to consolidate around right here and then potentially creating a higher low a clear higher low with a few hourly rejections and then we can take it to the upside route so the gbps are pretty straightforward i didn't take any trades uh, to discuss it further but the G the overall bias of the gbp is sales so we buy euro gbp and we sell the gbps but first of all make sure to wait for some pullbacks don't go too high the market can just continue to roll to the upside so if you found that you uh, that you're spotting for example a supportive level like this and the market is failing to break below then make sure to take a trade because the market is actually never too high uh, the more people say that the market is too high, the higher the market will climb, all right? Because more people start selling and actually uh, the banks want this for people to sell so that they can take the market even uh, higher after manipulation, of course, all right? So uh, this is my outlook on the GBPs. Let's just wait for some pullbacks and let's see what do we have on Tuesday. Let's have a look at gold. So you can see from a weekly time frame, we had this massive up, uh, upward movement. And right now we're having a little bit of a consolidation on the bottom right here. The market creating this weak area, failing to break below. And I really think it's starting to cook for a move to the upside. So as you can see, the overall price action is descending, creating this triangular formation or whatever it is. It's starting to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And I think it's going to explode to other direction very soon. So we can see that support from the bottom and overall uh, a consolidation uh, from a quality time frame perspective. We had some opportunities, but it's more of a uh, like manipulative movements like this head and shoulders right here. The market pushing down then exploding back up with this push. Then we have the correction. So potentially you can be looking for a trade right here. Then we push back up again and right here, actually, the market ended up consolidating. So from quality perspective right now, uh the last the last price action right here is really not making too much sense because we had a nice push up pull back higher high but then the market started to consolidate right here so uh for gold what level i can mark is around this one because this is a pretty major that the market failed to break on many times right now we emerged above we're testing it right now and then i will drop a little line like this because this is the overall structure that the market is respecting and creating a little bit of a head and shoulders right so more looking for an upside on GOAT, right? Upside on GOAT, which means downside on DXY. So let's just see what is going to happen. But personally, for me, I always want to see a nice introduction of volume first. So potentially something like this will mean a lot to me uh, or an introduction like this. So I got ex excited when the market actually broke above because I said, all right, we're going up. And then potentially right here, it was only a consolidation. So uh, any trade cannot, be, I, I don't like trading consolidations at the top because usually you're going to have a move to the downside and then the market will then actually uh, move to the upside. So as for right now, uh, I will just keep those levels right here and I'm going to wait, wait patiently and see when the market is going to move. All right. So if I have a nice move to the upside right here, I'm going to be waiting for a pullback around these areas and then I'm going to uh, take a long to the upside. But as for right now, it's not clear. The market might dip below as well back into this overall consolidation. So let's see what monday new york session and then on tuesday what will uh, the market create for structure uh, for us and then we're gonna act on it and wrapping up the video with just a very quick outlook on the indices us 30 overall bearish week keep in mind this uh, weekly support and resistance level right here that the market is going to potentially tap into overall we're moving in an uptrend however this week we had some sellers coming in pushing the market down breaking a structure on the quality time frame and providing us with some short opportunities Right here, we have a break in the retest. Right here, we have a break in the retest as well. So overall, the market is moving down. 
right now i can see that the market is creating this sort of level right here so i really want to see how it's going to react and potentially if we have a break above the ema so as you can see the ema is overall being respected right here so we are trending to the downside but if we have a nice emergence above emer emerging yeah what is the noun of this one yeah if we have a nice the market nicely emerging above the ema and breaking this structure and then potentially coming back down for a retest then we can start looking for longs on the indices however keep in mind that this is strongly fundamentally based uh, and uh, the stocks are not doing good right now uh, there are a lot of speeches of crashes incoming so pretty excited to see what is actually ahead of us but overall nasdaq as well is falling to the downside but keeping in mind this supportive level that looks like a little bit of a double bottom daily time frame that i can see the drop the overall drop but is it a correction i think it should be because even from a weekly time frame we have this area right here that push pull back and then a nice push and right now we're having the pullback again so let's see how the market is going to behave around those areas and if we're going to have any introduction of buy pressure from a quality time frame perspective this is our last lower high so any break above uh, uh, above it and any break above the ema as well will turn me into a buyer all right so this is for today guys i really hope you appreciated the analysis i tried to keep it as quick as possible and as educational as possible as well let me know if you extract something valuable from this video uh, if you want me to keep doing it make sure to smash the like button to support the channel leave a comment because i always appreciate hearing from you guys and uh thank you for staying up until now i really appreciate you i wish you a crushing week and see you on my next video